Ezekiel, on the other hand, sleeps like a baby. It's annoying. Does he snore fancy, too? Stop it. No, he's all right. He's a bit corny, but... After what I went through with Ed, corny is really, really nice. No, I'm happy for you. If anybody deserves to be happy, it's you. Welcome to Knock Pro Nation. Welcome back, guys. Today we are going over and reviewing the season nine premiere preview. Walking Dead preview. Yep, premiere preview. And uh, that came out on Sunday and it was really cool. Uh, Angela Kang, Kari Payton, and um, oh, I forgot the actor who plays Jesus. Uh, Tom? Tom Payne. Tom Payne. Yeah. There we go. They uh, were on set. So, yeah. Yeah. So, they do this every year. They have a, a, a preview of the season to come. Yep. Um, and this one was really cool because, I mean, it didn't give us too much. We did get a sneak peek. Um, it was about a, uh, a minute, two minute clip. A minute and a half of yeah. the first, I believe it's the first episode. Yep. Yeah. So, so let's just go into some of the information that was confirmed. Yeah, we're, uh, we're by gonna, Angela Kang. We're basically going to take some key points key from points, yeah. the preview, yep, and discuss those. Have have a quick conversation about each topic, um, and, and yeah, and, and then uh, we'll we'll talk about it and get your thoughts. So, yep. um, the first one, uh, Angela Kang, uh, basically, uh, in a sense, saying it's confirmed there will be a time skip of one and a half years. Yep. So a year and a half time jump from season eight to season nine. Which was what we predicted. We predicted anywhere between one and two years, of course, to build that freaking uh, windmill. But, um, yeah, that's kind of what we predicted. Yeah, definitely. So, so from the end of All Out War to the current timeline, it will be a year and a half away. And uh, one thing I want to say about that is, wow. Because yeah. the shots that we've gotten um, from Season 9 and how deteriorated the the right. the elements are, you know, the, the cars, the roads, the city that they're that they go into it's amazing what a, a year can do yeah it is amazing and sorry forgot to mention this guys this will contain spoilers for the walking dead season Ooh. nine and spoilers for the walking dead comics as well so i just want to get that out there yeah, before we sorry. continue on <laughs> <laughs> so the next topic is it is confirmed of a relationship is brewing and no it is not be between carol and daryl it is between carol and and Ezekiel. We have an official ship. We have what? They call it a ship. A ship? Yeah. Oh, I don't. What is that? What are you not hip with things now? No. What does that mean? <sighs> Relationship. <laughs> oh, they're shipping. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we know that because uh, remember in the trailer we saw during the campfire we were looking. I was like, you know, Ezekiel sitting down. I was like, that looks like Carol. I think that's Carol. And. We've gotten confirmation that, yes, they are having a relationship. We get even more confirmation in the sneak peek, but we'll go into that last. Yeah, we'll get into that later. And the next one is uh, pretty much all of the Walking Dead comic fans know this, but anyone who isn't a comic book fan, we get the reveal of Maggie's baby's name, which is Herschel, yep. named after her father. Yep. So... You know, as us being Walking Dead comic fans, we've already known that. Um, they could have they could have changed it for the show. They could have called him Glenn if they wanted to. Who knows? But um, it's Herschel, and I think... Um, I'm glad they didn't go that route. I'm glad they didn't either. Yeah, Because yeah, it's so. just too much, right? Like, you, you don't want to be yeah. reminded of that every time the baby gets brought around. Like... Well, and I think, and I'm not sure if it's confirmed. They didn't confirm the the middle name, so the middle name could be could be Herschel Glenn. Yeah, you know Green. So yeah, yeah. And and truly, I don't think we'll see too much of the baby. It'll be like a Judith where we get right. certain shots of the baby just to say, hey, he's still around. Right. And that's it. And it is a baby from the shots. I believe it's probably about six months old, maybe well, nine months old. Have to be a year now, half. Well, a year and a half. So yeah, so about a year old. <laughs> well, according to Maggie, pregnancy. Right, it would probably be two months. <laughs> no, the baby does look like it's probably like anywhere between six like to eight, nine, nine months. Yeah, yeah, six to ten months. So, yeah. Um, another little weird. Well, it's not really confirmation, but we heard about this in the preview. Is um, they showed a shot, and it was a little onset interview with uh, with Tara, uh, the actress who plays Tara. She mentioned that she is actually riding the horse that Rick was riding in season one. 
<laughs> not too much about this, though. I mean, not I too mean, much. I thought it was a cool little fun fact. I mean, it would know. be different if we saw her, like, literally riding the same horse that Rick Grimes was riding after Rick Grimes rode the horse. You know, right. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, some indication right. that she took his horse. Really, that's for Maggie to do, first of all. Yes. Or not Maggie. Wow. Michelle. Right. So what they did is they kind of used some paint on the horse to, to cover it up to make it look different, but... You know, the, in the interview, she said it's the, it's the horse that, you know, Rick was riding in season one. So I yeah. just thought it was a cool little tidbit, you know, a little throwback. I figured, well, why isn't Rick riding it then? That is interesting <laughs> because what? We're like, what? But that horse Eight, would have nine been nine years? Well, that horse. Well, actually, the horse was devoured by walkers, you remember? As he was trying to get the guns yeah, back. Yeah, but I'm just but, saying, in, yeah. you know, real life purposes, the fact right. that they're using that same horse. Yeah. Like, what, nine years later? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. It's pretty sweet. So, uh, we did, uh, Angela King did mention that we are getting some new characters pulled right from the comic books. Um, we're getting characters named Kelly and Luke. Now, Kelly in the comic books um, is a male. He is the boy, he is Connie's boyfriend in the comics. Now, in the show, Connie is the individual that is deaf and uses mm -hmm. sign language. Right, which is different. It's not like that in the comic books. Correct. Um, so, Kelly in the show... Um, you saw her in the trailer who was um, speaking for Connie, and that is her sister. So in the show now, Kelly is actually Connie's sister, which I thought was an interesting change. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes. Luke. Uh, Luke is an individual who Kelly and Luke also came uh, with Magna's group. Um, Luke, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> doesn't vote so well for luke in the comics no he first appeared in issue 127 and he dies in issue 144 to the hands of alpha who decapitated him and he is one of the 11 individuals that she put on a wooden pike to mark the territory uh for the whisperers yeah yeah <laughs> so if we're following the comics um don't get too uh, close to Luke um, as a character on the show because chances are he may uh, follow his comic book um, adaption. And then we're hoping to other characters that we know do not follow their comic book death, <laughs> which is Rosita and Ezekiel. So. You know, I, I, I hope so too, right? Because, and I think I've said this in a couple of our videos before, now that Rick's going, I think they need that star power. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know, the short time that we've had King Ezekiel, I think he's kind of become a fan favorite. Right. So I'll just mention this really quick. Um, basically, in the you know, how Alpha basically gets 11 people out and kills them is there, she disguises herself as one of Rick's people, and she is luring them out of the fairgrounds within Alexandria, I believe, right? Mm -hmm. And so she, she lures 11 people out, she decapitates them and puts them on spikes or pikes, and then Rick looking for individuals who are missing goes out um she re he remembers alpha mentioning don't cross my borders or something's going to happen basically and he rick and other people look upon <laughs> the wooden pikes of heads which is uh pretty daunting marked but, by uh, the 11 individuals marked by the 11 out. Individuals, now she yeah. was able to do that because you mentioned fairgrounds so yep. the three communities the hilltop uh, Alexandria and the kingdom, it might have been the saviors as well, but mm -hmm. uh, had a fair, you, yep. you know, basically uniting, fair, yep. uniting all of the communities together. And it was this opportunity that Alpha took to lure the individuals away from the fair. Just um, the message. And we did get a little foreshadowing of a fair in mm -hmm. one of Carl's visions yep. um, that yep. we had in the previous season. So mm -hmm. um, it's safe to say that that probably will happen. Yeah. So. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. <laughs> so um, some other information that Angela kind of mentioned is that she mentions the first part of the season is going to be showing how the communities are getting along and working of rebuilding after the war. I think what fans are going to enjoy most about this season is how much is happening. There's tons of change and it's really exciting. I'm excited for them to see the group in a new way because I feel like a lot of changes with the people that we have lost in season eight and how we have had it develop over into season nine, just how the group is and what their dynamic is like. It's really cool to see how they've restructured their lives. We see our heroes start to relax a little bit more into themselves. I mean, there's still a lot of hurt that they're sorting through, but now they're finally starting to come into their own and just accept the world as it is. They're not trying to fight against 
experienced it. I think what's really exciting is the world has evolved. It's so funny because it's, it's not a progression, it's degression, which happens when, you know, you're basically in a post-apocalyptic world. What's going to be really exciting, I think, for the fans is to see how we're adapting to that. We have a whole new normal when we get back. It's exactly what would happen. The way this world looks now, I think it's fascinating. It feels like the show I fell in love with nine years ago. It feels like we're making that version again. It's the same show, but it's a different show. It, it has a new soundtrack, you know what I mean? It really, really does. Um, as you know, they're, you know they're, they're scavenging for you know, supplies. They're not using cars anymore. They're using horses and wagons. Um, you know, hopefully we'll, you know, we will get to be seeing the windmill that, that was being constructed. So that was one big piece that she mentioned is they're going to be showing that and how, especially how Maggie and Daryl are, you know, their relationship with Rick is, um, yeah. because Maggie still is not cool with what Rick did by keeping Negan alive, but she's a team player and she's going to continue on, but yeah. And I, we'll and, and I, and I think the, the trailer, the season trailer kind of shows exactly what Angela For, Chang yeah. was talking For about. Shadows, yeah. I think a lot of the trailer we're probably going to see in the first episode actually, simply because you get to see the the plans for rebuilding the church. You yep. get to see the hilltop and how it's flourishing. Yep. Uh, Rick visiting the hilltop and probably takes the opportunity to talk to Maggie, who gives her sense of unrest that Negan's in the jail and, you know, it going to get the, the wagon from the museum, stuff like that. I mean, we're yep. going to see that right away, I think. But uh, yeah. it, it was cool that we get confirmation that the first half of the season will be like that. Yeah, and another big piece is Angela Kang mentioned um, about Rick's departure. Um, so she basically compares Rick's to another devastating comic book death, which is Rick when he lost Andrea in the comics. So I wanted to read her quote here, what she said on the show. She says, for comic book readers, they'll know what they'll know that when Rick lost Andrea, that was a huge moment for him. So we'll, we will be exploring the different directions that Michonne goes, and it may not be exactly what you expect. Um, so what we're getting out of this is that in the comics, Rick is completely devastated after he loses Andrea. He is very depressed. Um, he's always sleeping by her grave. You know, Carl is very worried about him. And so I'm thinking that, you know, Angela mentioned that she, that we're going to be exploring and seeing how Michonne is going to be dealing with this exit. So it's kind of like a role reversal. So now we're going to see Michonne dealing with this loss, yeah. depending if he's going to die or just going to leave. Yeah, and, I don't know. And that kind of speaks to, the, and that's one thing that I caught from that is she she says it's not what we expect. I think a lot of people, and this is what I'm hoping again. His first reaction. <laughs> I, I think that a lot of people yeah. expect for him to be killed off. Yeah. Um, and, and I and and maybe that's Angela Kang just basically speaking to that, saying, look, right. this isn't this is exit is not what you think it is. Um, and possibly not killing him off and finding some other creative way of uh, exiting the character without necessarily killing him off. She's, if it's yeah. a mystery, I'll take it. She's mentioned it so many times in, in interviews that she, her and her writing team want to send off this iconic character the right way. Now, she has to say that. She's not going to give any details no, no, of absolutely. what they're doing. So it's yeah. up to our imagination and seeing in the trailers what could potentially happen. How would they do it the right way? I mean, you got to think about it. In a sense, I don't want it to happen, but I think it, death would, in a sense, would be the only way. Why would Rick leave the group and leave Michelle? Why would he? You know? Why would they? Why would Carl die? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean it. Why would, why would Carl get bit by a walker when he's run into so many walkers before in the past nine years that we've... One mistake and you're done. <laughs> get it, right? No, I, 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 I know. It. Yeah, I know. But, but, but yeah, I know. and, and I, I, I kind of agree. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, again, it's me holding on to something that, yes. you know... Helicopter. Helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to pick up Rick. It's going to pick him up and you... But now that leaves Michonne alone, though. I would that'd be devastating. <laughs> it would be an important enough mission. It's true. That is true. So anyway, that's <laughs> anyway. Uh, that's pretty much the preview uh, information that was uh, that we pulled from that. 
Um, so the teaser, the teaser was really good. I think the teaser was about a minute and a half or so. Um, it all surrounded with uh, Carol and Daryl. They're just hanging out at night, and it was a really yeah. good interaction with there them. There was a shot in the trailer of Carol resting her head on Daryl yeah. at, at night on what appeared to be like a dock, uh, like a shipping dock. It looked more like a cabin okay. house that they were on. It looked more like sure. a cabin. But, you know. um, <laughs> and that immediately got people like Yvette Brown uh, probably yeah. freaking out that we were going to get the Daryl Carroll ship she was devastated when she heard yeah. it wasn't going to happen <laughs> she was and, devastated and really i i liked like immediately the first part so daryl's there smoking looks like he's smoking a joint it does <laughs> but anyway carol takes the cigarette from it or he hands it to her thinking that she's going to take a drag and what do you, what does she do she stomps it and stomps it out and tells daryl but the line is gonna kill you exactly that's what one thing that was interesting is that she mentioned this is going to kill you and you know you would think Seasons ago, she wouldn't care if he was smoking a cigarette. She would probably take a drag too. But I think the realization is she's understanding that, okay, look, you know, we have to survive. You know, why would you want to do something that will eventually kill you and you're going to turn? Well, that's how kind of how I took it. I agree. I think at this point she's starting to realize, like, there actually is life after the apocalypse. Now yeah. that they've got these communities together and yeah. they've survived this long, that I think she's starting to realize that, like, Yes, our lives can now continue to possibly start to get back to normal. Yeah. And we get another confirmation that Carol and Ezekiel are together because Daryl asks, asks her why is she in bed. And Carol mentions that Ezekiel snores and it's very annoying. <laughs> yeah. And I love Daryl's reaction because he says, uh, what does he say? Does he snore? Uh, does he snore? Does he snore fancy? Does he snore fancy? <laughs> and, you, and she like nudges him like, shut up, be quiet. But what's really cool is that, you know, Daryl says he, he, think, he thinks Ezekiel is all right, you know, good dude. He does say he's a bit corny. Um, but this is where we get Carol referencing her previous husband, Ed. She was like, what I went through with Ed, a little corny is nice. That was a great fallback. And Dar yeah, yeah, it was really, one. it was really great. And Daryl says, you know, I want for anyone to be happy. It's I, need, I want it to be you. I want you to be happy. And it was just a really nice yeah, moment. And that she deserves to be happy. She deserves to be happy. Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, if you guys don't remember from season one, Ed, and season two as well. Well, season one, yeah, Ed was just brutal. He, and he beat her. Um, I Physically I, and verbally abused I wanna her. I want to say he abused the, the, the we, we kids. Ne we never we got some kind of... We never saw it, but, yeah, I think that we got a reference that he did abuse, possibly abuse the kids, too. Um I really wanted Shane to just beat him to death. And that one scene. almost did. We almost did. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was really cool to hear her mention, you know, Ed and just how she's so happy now with Ezekiel that um, what she, her previous life, what she was, because we've seen Carol grow. If you saw oh my gosh, season yeah. one, Carol up to what she started really changing in like season, the prison. Um, I think she started, yeah, because she was teaching uh, the kids how to sharpen knives yeah. and stuff like that. So even before that, but I mean, season one, season two, yeah, and I think but you're season right, three but... and on, she has but really man, grown. Especially when she hit uh, Alexandria and, and yeah. putting the W on her forehead and taking out the wolves oh, and yeah. baking cookies, like yeah, dude. hiding the fact that she was just this ruthless person now. <laughs> Yeah, and which is completely different from her comic book character. Oh yeah, because her comic book character died. I can't in the tell prison. you in the prison. Yeah, yeah, in the prison. So it's I walked I, right into a locker. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love her on the show. I think she's a very strong character, um, and a very strong female character to that. And also Angela Kang, as mentioned before, that we're going to see a very big presence, uh, more uh, kind of a more female um, leadership presence in this season. More on you know on the Michonne. Um, maggie carol and you know everybody so uh, i thought it was great uh, it was a really good preview cool teaser and um we're excited we have uh two more months left <laughs> yeah october 7th I think. october 7th yeah. yeah so two more months of probably another teaser as well a couple more teasers yeah yeah we'll get another uh, another like a trailer or two or, or some kind of teaser but yeah it uh, will get to probably a uh, official poster or official you know artwork for character artwork um i have an i have an idea for a second trailer the trailer is only going to be 30 seconds long 
what you're going to see is you're going to see a herd of walkers just walking towards us, right? And then they're suddenly going to stop. And the camera is just going to keep zooming in, zooming in, zooming in. And they're going to look at a couple faces of walkers. And you're going to see their normal eyes looking side to side. Whisperers. Yeah. That'd be sweet. <laughs> or it's like Alpha right yeah. there. Like she's just looking like around. Or, or they'll like slowly start to. She'll slowly go like this and, and then, then cut, cut it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> anyway, guys, let us know what you thought of this review of the uh, Walking Dead Season 9 premiere um special premiere uh and let us know your thoughts on the on the topics that we've talked about give it definitely thumb up the video follow us uh subscribe to the channel if you're new uh follow us at knock nation on twitter and facebook and thank you guys so much for all the love and support we could not do this without you and stay tuned for the next walking dead season nine news or topics video coming very soon we'll see you later we're knock nation we're, we're out, out.